Jessica had married Tom for a great and bright love. She thought there was no better man in the world and that they would live happily ever after until old age and die together on the same day. But life sometimes diverges from dreams and plans. Tom provided for the family. Jessica didn't have to work. But in order for her to live comfortably and quietly, he was forced to go away often on business trips and she waited for him at home, creating comfort. But over time, the loneliness bored her. They often talked about having a baby, that Jessica would have something to do, and age was rushing in. But the pregnancy wasn't coming yet. More and more often, Jessica began to leave the house alone. She wandered around the store all day, wasting large sums on trinkets to pass the time. Then one day, sipping a cocktail while staring out the window, she didn't notice a young man sitting at her table. Miss you? He asked. Jessica flinched. How did you get here? He was Tom's younger brother, with whom Jessica had never really gotten along with. Do you miss your husband? John began a casual conversation and ordered two cocktails. I miss him too. Let's miss him together. Jessica sat silently, and John continued to talk and gradually moved on to jokes that made Jessica laugh. She hadn't even noticed how engrossed she was in the conversation and they chatted at length, finishing their third cocktail. She suddenly realized that he was not the boar she had once thought he was, and probably a more interesting conversationalist than Tom. This remark flashed in passing and alerted Jessica. It was already dark outside the window. Jessica realized that her phone had run out of juice, and her husband had not been able to reach her all day. She tried to get up, but slumped back into the chair. Her eyelids grew heavy. She laid her head on the table and fell asleep. She awoke in the morning with a terrible headache. John was sleeping soundly next to her. She tried to remember how she ended up in her and Tom's bed, but other than drinking cocktails, which had no sense of alcohol at all, nothing came to mind. She threw on her robe and wandered into the bathroom. After taking a cold shower and a pill, she cautiously peeked into the bathroom. Her and John's belongings were strewn across the floor. Hey, she called out cautiously. Get up, it's time for you to go. John rolled over on his side, stretched and opened his eyes, jumped up and wrapped himself in a blanket. Where are you from? He rubbed his eyes. Oh, I met you at the bar last night. I can't believe I got so drunk. You're good too. Yeah, I didn't even think the cocktail would be that strong. It was good, and it didn't taste like alcohol. I warned you, and you said, let's have another. Jessica looked guiltily at John, who looked confusedly frightened and tried to tell her off, and it seemed to her that he was something different, not like everyone else, not even like her husband. He always seemed like a nerd to her because he tried to make everything perfect, figure things out all the way to the end, and don't talk about nothing. Before she married, Jessica had often been at Tom's house, and there was John always talking about something he was passionate about. She thought a guy like that would never interest the girl. But now, when she saw the other side of him, something seemed to shift in her mind. Her heart was pounding strangely, and it felt like she was losing her head. John got up slowly, and noticing his brother's wife's sizzling gaze on him, cautiously, he left the bedroom. When he returned from the shower, he began to quickly put on his things. But Jessica quietly came up from behind him and embraced him, turning him around to her. What if I don't let go? Stop it. It was a drunken accident. Let's get it together now. To be honest, I'm very sorry. You're not. I'm not. Jessica stared into his eyes, trying to see the spark in them. A hint that he was lying, that he enjoyed her company too. But he tried to free himself from her clinging embrace. Jessica, let go. This is madness. You're my brother's wife. Okay? I feel like shit. I've never felt so bad in my life. And the worst part is, I don't remember how we ended up in the same bed. I was holding on when I had to drag you to the cab, then to the apartment, and then that was it. I don't remember anything. She continued to hold him as hard as she could. Let's remember what it was like. Don't fight it. You think I didn't notice the way you looked at me? You imagined it. Don't think so highly of yourself. I didn't mean to offend you, but you're not my type. He jerked her hands away sharply and hurried toward the exit. Tom needs to be told everything at once. Better the bitter truth, he shouted from the doorway. Don't you dare, Jessica jumped out onto the porch, closing her robe. Don't you dare, or you'll be sorry. I'm already sorry, John shouted, hurrying down the steps. 
When John returned home, he could not decide for a long time whether or not to dial the number on the phone. Staring at the screen for a long time, he decided that it was not a good idea to break news of this nature. I would have to talk to my brother face to face. In the evening, John's mother knocked on the door. John, Jessica just called. Her faucet's broken. She wants help. You better get over there before she floods the neighbors. Tom asked us to help in his absence. Why don't you call a plumber? Well, why call a stranger when you can do it all so much faster? Go on, son. John grabbed his toolbox out from under the cabinet and began to put on his shoes. His mother noticed his strange behavior. Son, what happened? Well, if it's too hard for you to be distracted, let me call my father to come and see her after work. He's just finishing his shift. No need. I can do it myself. For the first time in his life, he answered his mother rudely. Well, I can see something's wrong. You shouldn't be driving in your condition, John. Mom, I'm sorry I snapped. It's all right, really. My nerves have been acting up. I had a tough assignment at work. I'm sorry. He kissed his mother on the cheek and left the apartment, deciding that he should have a serious talk with the restless Jessica. As expected, there was nothing wrong with the faucet. John didn't even have to take the tools out of the car. Jessica greeted him in a tight, short dress with a frank neckline. And with her head down, she cried. John, I'm sorry. I want to apologize and explain. Let's talk, please. It's very difficult for me to be alone in this situation. Let's have some tea and talk about it calmly. Don't say no, it's my fault, okay? But I'm sorry. John went silently into the kitchen and sat down at the table by the window, looking out into the distance at the bright lanterns illuminating the small drops of rain. Jessica, sobbing, poured tea into cups here's tea, lemon, jam. I don't want any, thank you. Say what you want, and I'll go. John, please, let's resolve this without conflict. I'm just afraid of Tom's reaction. Let's keep what happened between us. I'm begging you, please, as a human being. You yourself don't want to ruin the brotherly relationship you've always had, which has always been perfect. Don't you agree? He nervously picked up a cookie, held it in his hand silently for a long time, then took a bite. Jessica, as if unintentionally, slid a cup of tea toward him. He took a bite, and then another bite, and drank all the tea. John, I'm sorry, but I couldn't help it. My husband hasn't been home for a month. I'm alone in four walls. I'm bored. Have you ever tried working? John asked and felt a strange relaxing vibration in his body. Jessica got up from her chair and moved abruptly, without giving him a chance to wake up, moved to his lap, wrapping her arms around his neck. He couldn't object. In his mind, he knew that it was wrong, that it shouldn't be like this, that it was his brother's wife. He shouldn't. But the sudden rush of desire overcame common sense. He picked her up in his arms and carried her into the bedroom. And when he came to his senses, he realized that the irreparable had happened again. What did you put in my tea? I'm sure it happened for a reason. Nothing, Jessica said. You just couldn't resist me. That's all. Just admit it, honey. You have nothing to lose. Just keep quiet and everyone will be fine. Will you stay? John gave her an angry look and left. A couple of days later, Jessica called her husband's again and asked John to come fix the iron. Mom, I'm not going, John tried to object, but his mother insisted. Your father has a shift at work today. There's no way he can make it, and Jessica said it was urgent to get the ironing done. Once again, John went in hopes of convincing Jessica to stop this nonsense. After a short conversation, John was about to leave, but the door wouldn't open. Oh, we'll have to wait for a handyman, and it's already nighttime. Jessica said. John pulled out his phone and started searching online for repair shops, but no one was answering their phone. Only one service answered the phone, but they promised to come only in the morning. Desperate, John sat down on the floor by the door, wrapping his arms around his head. And Jessica whispered, Go to sleep in the hall. Don't be afraid. What have you done with the lock? I won't tell. You didn't want to go, but you couldn't find a reason to stay, and I helped you. Come on, let's go. John went into the hall and laid down on the sofa without taking off his clothes, and in the morning, they woke up together again in the bedroom. Unable to fight the situation any longer, John dialed his brother's number, and without any preamble, 
informed him he had been intimate with his wife. Jessica lashed out at John in a frenzy. How could you? You were out of your mind. Why would you do that? I told you not to do that. I would have talked to Tom myself. She ran to the door, deftly opened the broken lock, and literally pushed John out of the apartment. And slamming the door behind him, she burst into tears, realizing that life was broken and there was nothing to fix. She was afraid of losing Tom, and she didn't want to let John go. This strange feeling was keeping her awake. Her heart was beating faster than usual. She couldn't understand what was happening, and after lying on the bed in oblivion for a while, she suddenly came to her senses and realized that it was a fleeting attraction. She had succumbed to temptation for longing, loneliness, and sadness, and her love for Tom had gone nowhere. She was hurt, ashamed, and bitter at her own helplessness, at the shameful passion that had ruined her whole life. John returned home and very quickly packed his things, and without explaining anything, left home. He decided to go out on an expedition, where he had been offered to go for work for a long time. His mother did not ask him anything, just shaking her head sadly. Everything was clear, without words. Jessica soon found out that she was pregnant with John's baby. This made the situation even worse. By the time her husband arrived, she had packed her things, though she had nowhere to go. Tom, surprisingly, did not make a scene and cause a showdown. He went silently into the apartment, sat down on the sofa, and began an uneasy conversation. I am ready to forgive you, because I love you, because I can't live without you. But if you have fallen out of love with me, and if what you did was serious and deliberate, then I won't hold you. Jessica burst into tears and, sobbing, tried to answer, which was very difficult for her. My action was reckless. Passion and ridiculous desire have clouded my mind, but I still love you, strange as it may sound. I love you, but I cannot accept forgiveness. I'm not worthy of it and besides, I'm pregnant by your brother. Tom clutched his head, clutching his temples with his hands. Jessica stood up, picked up her suitcase, and slowly headed for the exit. But he grabbed her by the arm. Don't go. I can't live without you. As for the baby, I couldn't tell you, but I've been diagnosed with infertility. It's my fault we have no children. I didn't know how to tell you. I was afraid you'd go away and not accept the news. Let there be a baby. Jessica threw herself into his arms. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm guilty before you, but even if we didn't have children, I still love you. Five months passed. Tom and Jessica's relationship was slowly returning to normal. Tom had transferred to a new job and no longer needed to go on business trips. One day, Jessica felt sick and went to the clinic and learned that the fetus inside her was not developing. Jessica underwent surgery and retreated into herself. She was getting used to the idea that soon there would be a baby running around the house. Tom, too, convinced himself that he could love this baby and that one chance for them to be parents collapsed in an instant. Three months passed. To distract his wife from her gloomy thoughts and distract himself, Tom bought a trip to a sanatorium, and they went on vacation. The sea, the sun, and the secluded surroundings helped. They were able to enjoy this moment, leaving everything behind. It seemed to them that after five years of being together, they were only now on their honeymoon together. They returned home rested, happy, and in love as if for the first time. Three weeks passed, and one day when Tom returned home from work, he noticed a mystery on his wife's face and a new gleam in her eyes. She kept her hands behind her back. Tell me, what made you so happy? Jessica held out a pregnancy test to him. Here, look. Tom saw the two stripes excitedly and looked questioningly at his wife. We're having a baby boy. Unbelievable, but a fact. Tom, I love you madly. He picked her up in his arms and circled around the room for a long time, kissing her face and unable to hold back tears of joy and immense happiness. When Tom was re-examined, the doctor spread his hands. Only a miracle could bring such a change. Normally, such a diagnosis has no cure at all. Love works miracles, Tom answered, hugging his wife tenderly. Jessica gave birth to a baby boy. Then, three years later, they had a daughter. Six years later, another daughter. John called his family only occasionally. He married a girl in the hermit village and stayed to live in the deep taiga, 
and Tom and Jessica never remembered that incident and consider themselves the happiest couple. Everyone makes mistakes at some point, but it is important to understand and forgive in time, so as not to deprive themselves and their loved ones of true happiness.